Hey, 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 JK here. And I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. This marks the start of your playoffs or the week going into the last week of regular season still with the opportunity to make playoffs. I am still vying for playoff spots, still vying for better playoff positioning or trying to play spoiler for other guys going into the playoffs. Without further ado, we're going to get right into it. We're going to change it up a little bit this week. We're going to start with the ESPN leagues. We're going to start with Russell My Gym Jams. We won this week, eight categories to five categories to three categories, improving our record to 123 wins, 158 losses, and 55 ties. We're still in eighth out of 10 place, but we did improve. We are going to be building off this going into next year. Uh, we still do have one week until the playoffs, but we're not making the playoffs in this league. Um, so the goal is to get better, to look at who we may want to use as keepers for next year because we do have an extremely large number of keepers in my opinion. It's up where uh, into like the mid 20s, like 25, 26, something like that, which um, after you know thinking about the league that I just joined last week with 40, uh, 20 doesn't seem so bad. But in any case, Russell, my Jim James did win this week. I am very happy about that. I was also playing the team that's behind me in the standings, but that's not the point. A win is a win is a win. With any win, we have to talk about the guys who helped us get there. There were performances from JT Real Muto, Brandon Nimmo, and Jamer Candelario throughout the week, having two home runs each. CJ Abrams had four stolen bases alone this week, and of all people, Trevor May had me the most saves with three. I was not expecting that from an Oakland Athletics player to lead my team, other than Estre Ruiz and stolen bases, in any category, especially a category that required you to win games that were close, that weren't like walk-offs, that weren't fluke wins, you know, something like that. So thank you, Trevor May, for getting me those three saves. The as and drops this week were pretty short. I did pick up Brandon Williamson, who then was diagnosed with COVID, so I added him to my injured list. He picked up Javier Assad and Taj Bradley for his start late in the week against the Platinum Level Health Insurance team from Cleveland. And the drops included Christopher Sanchez and Hunter Renfro. I dropped Hunter Renfro because I thought he was waived. I thought he was put on waivers by the Angels. So I dropped him. I did not get a notification that he was still eligible to play. And the day I dropped him, he hit two home runs. And now we're going to transition to the South Harmon Institute of Technology team. We did catch the L this week, seven categories to nine categories to two categories, bringing my record to 173 wins, 140 losses, and 65 ties. This was the last week of the regular season heading into the playoffs, and despite the loss, I was able to maintain third overall in the standings. That means I will play the number two team in the two-week playoff starting September 4th going until September 17th. This team is one that does have uh, about 20 more wins than me, um, and we did match up during the regular season once or twice. Um, I think we both won one. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure of the overall record. However, I think it will be a pretty good matchup. Um, I am obviously hoping to win, but I'm going to be playing very smart. I'm not playing guys who I think are going to be risky. However, later on in the video, you will find that, again, I will say, start your studs. And it came back to bite me that I did not start my stud. Jamer Candelario and Freddie Freeman both had two home runs for me. And Freddie, along with Matt Olson, both had 10-plus total bases for me. The edge drops for this week were pretty short, as I was able to add phenomenal pitchers, Eduardo Rodriguez and Cole Reagans, who has been on fire as of late. The drops to make room for those two included Lars Newtbar, who's on the IL, who has since come back, and Kenta Maeda. And now we're going to move to the Peach Creek Purgatory team, the new team that I took over, and this will be my first week in complete control. And unfortunately, I did lose 1,065 points to 1,001 points. Now, remember just like last team I talked about starting your studs? Well... I did not start Max Freed this week, and in this particular league, he accumulated 51 points for me. Now, you might be thinking, well, you still would have lost had you started him. It just would have been a whole heck of a lot closer. Well, hold on. Instead, I started Trevor Williams. In this league, Trevor Williams got negative 10 points. So, had I started 
Max Freed, and that started Trevor Williams, that would have been at least a 61-point turnaround or 61-point difference. So you might still be thinking, you're still not winning in that situation. It would be 1,065 to 1,062. You still lose. Hold on, there's more. Riley Green won the IL September 2nd. As I was looking at my starting lineup, I saw he was in there and he won the IL, so I tried to move him to my IL spot, which I had open IL spots, and I had someone to play the outfield to replace him. Well, for some odd reason, it would not allow me to remove him from my starting lineup without releasing somebody. So I released somebody. However, it still would not allow me. It wouldn't go past that screen. So in any case, the game had not started by this point in time. Um, I decided to look at it a little bit later. Well, time got away from me. And unfortunately, I was unable to edit the lineup. I still do not know what the deal was, but in any case, I was stuck with Riley Green. Well, this might still come back to, you still lost, you don't have enough points. It's still 65 to 62. <laughs> well, the person I would have started was Jason Dominguez. In this league, on this day, he got six points. So, that would have put me at 1,068 points, and the other guy would have still had 1,065 points. Therefore, I could have won, I should have won. But I did not start Max Freed. And you might still be going back to that and like, why didn't you start him? Well, he was going against the Dodgers. And if you know anything about the Dodgers, they have a pretty good team. They have a lot of guys who can hit. Their pitching rotation is falling apart, especially after this news that came out about Julio Urias. But the point is, they have a really hot hitting team. And I wasn't about to subject myself to watching my team lose because I started a guy who I shouldn't have. Well, that ended up still happening. Another piece of information about this loss is that I could have played spoiler. The individual I was playing did end up making the playoffs with this record. However, had I beaten him, and I should have beaten him, another person would have gotten into the playoffs. Now, I have no buy-in to anyone in this league. I don't know anyone. I just randomly joined, and I thought it would have been really cool to, again, play that spoiler as the newest person in the league with the worst record of 4-16-1. Uh, beating one of the top guys in the league and, you know, ruining their season per se. Some of the bright spots from this loss include Ronald Acuna with 112 points, Trey Turner with 103 points, and Blake Snell with 86 points. Some of the guys that did not help me at all and 1,000% played into this loss included Trevor Williams with negative 10 points. Zach Grinke, who was a bulk reliever who I picked up to try to be savvy and, and use as a Chico, got me negative five points. And Tyler Anderson got me goose egg. He got me no points. I started Tyler Anderson instead of Max Fried. Now go ahead and roast me and say, oh, it's your fault. You shouldn't have started him. Oh, Tyler Anderson's been terrible. But Trevor Williams has been pretty good, and I don't think anyone would blame me if I didn't want to start a pitcher against another good team. Like I don't plan on starting anyone against the Braves. I don't think that is a bad move, but again, start your studs, don't listen to me. As we move to the ads and drops, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone when I tell you it was pitcher heavy. We added J.P. France, who was able to get a rebound win against those Boston Red Sox. Speaking of the Boston Red Sox, I did pick up bulk reliever Zach Grinke because he was going to be coming in and taking up the mound after Taylor Clark was the opener. Um, Grinke did not fare well against the Red Sox and ended up losing me points. I also grabbed Jacob Junis, the little cheat code that we talk about from week to week, especially with the Fantrax League, which I'm super excited about that update. And the last player I picked up was an outfielder because I needed some more outfielders in Connor Joe. And the drops included Joel Pyops, John Bertie, who, man, I tell you one thing, last year he had 41 stolen bases, and I had one guy offer me straight up Bertie for Wander Franco. Looking back on it, that would have been a crazy trade to accept, and, you know, this guy would have been ridiculed. Hindsight is. 2040 maybe because it would have been great for like a certain part of the year and you know this last month or so it wouldn't have been good but in any case John Bertie has done absolutely nothing 
The other drops included Tyler Anderson after he got me a goose egg and Zach Little. We mentioned the Fan Tracks League. We're going to go right into that update with the Funky Junkie Joker Monkeys having extended their win streak to eight games. I am so excited. The win came this week with a score of 491 to 398 against one of the teams that were ahead of me. I have closed the gap to jumping to you know, maybe fourth or fifth in the standings to one game. With one game left in the regular season, I do have an opportunity to improve on my sixth spot currently to again potentially fourth or fifth to change the person I end up playing for the first round of the playoffs. But some of the guys that helped me to this win included the six who had 20 or more points and Ronald Acuna who had 75 alone. Let's talk about the players who helped me absolutely zero, zilch, none. We're going to start with Nolan Arenado. Over the course of the week, he got me 6.5 points. That's a no for me, dog. I can't be having you perform like that, especially heading into the playoffs. I need more from you, man. Also, Nolan Gorman got me 1.5 points. He did come off the IL and he immediately got me negative 1.5 points because he had three strikeouts his first game back and proceeded to continue to have these strikeouts. Uh, I think like his, his first three or four games back, he went 0 for 12, 0 for 16, something like that. It was crazy. But in any case, yeah, the two Nolans did not do well for me overall. And pitching wise, Merrill Kelly got me negative five points. Now, he was one of my 13 starts. Had the game been a little closer in score, I would have been very upset with this. However, he gets you know this one mess up because he did make history. Uh, I think it was this past weekend. He um, had five games of 10 or more strikeouts. I think that's the first time in Diamondbacks history that's happened. Um, you would have thought maybe uh, some of the other pitchers like Grinky, like Randy Johnson, you know, just to name those two, um, Zach Gallen would have done it. However, maybe he's just one of the first players to do it or adding his name to the list of individuals to do it. But in any case, he's been great for the Diamondbacks. Um, so hopefully he continues to do well for them and for my team. Moving into the ads and drops, I did pick up Brandon Williamson, but then immediately moved him to my IL because he was diagnosed with COVID. I also then picked up Zach Thompson, who had a pretty good matchup with the Pirates, and will probably stick in that rotation for the Cardinals as their pitchers, for the most part, have just not done well, especially Adam Wainwright. Um, and talking about Miles Mikolas, he has an ERA that continues to balloon up. Steven Matz has been out. Um, so... Uh, Zach Thompson is probably going to get a longer look in the rotation. Um, I did drop Gavin Stone, however, with the recent information about Julio Urias for the Dodgers. Um, he may be called back up. Ryan Pepio will probably be the first person to be called back up. Um, however, Walker Bueller is also an option to be returning from the aisle here soon. So um, for the Funky Junkie Joker Monkeys, I will just be looking to... Um, add some guys who are going to help me obviously this week, but may also look to the first week of the playoffs. Again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but I do feel pretty good, especially with this eight game winning streak, using my cheat codes and Mr. Ronald Cunha. And now the most disappointing result of the week, the Kent Murphy Dingers. We were playing the last place team in the league who had not changed their lineup for weeks. I'm talking, they still have Domingo Germain, they still have Josh Jung. Um, they they still have Ryan Halsley on the IL. Um, Alejandro Kirk is still on their IL. So I don't even think they've looked at their lineup for weeks upon weeks. If you know anything about my luck facing the, the worst team in the league, you will know that um, when I'm talking about this and it being disappointing, I probably lost. And while I didn't necessarily get an L in the you know loss category, I didn't add one to the loss category, we did tie for all. But instead of maintaining a spot in the playoffs, I am literally half a game out right now. I am in seventh spot this week, luckily playing against the sixth place team. It's very simple. If I win this week, I am in the playoffs. If I tie this week, I am out of the playoffs. It would have been the same had I won last week. However, 
I would have been, I guess, in more control of my destiny. However, on Saturday and Sunday, I sat JT Real Muto because I thought Dalton Varsho playing in cores was going to result in some long balls. I was wrong because Real Muto hit two home runs and I tied in home runs after I had a breakout in the four o'clock games. I had home runs from Altuve, Adelis Garcia, and new third baseman for me, or shortstop or second, whichever position he was playing, Luis Rengifo. So I was super excited about that. So I was like, oh my gosh, I made the comeback. Uh, and then Nate Lowe got me a stolen base. What? So, you know, I had guys who were coming out of the woodworks and just doing things for me to say, hey, you know what, dude, we're going to get you in these playoffs. We're going to make sure you maintain your spot. We're going to get you there. Well, what had happened was I was leading five to four. And one of the categories I was leading in was saves. And he, the other guy I was playing, had both Fairbanks and Romano. Well, Romano came in for the save because the Blue Jays were only up by a run or two. And then the Rays were up by four runs. However, I don't remember who it was, but he came in and I think he gave up a run and then he let another guy on or two guys on. So then they called Fairbanks in. Well, because of the situation, there being the tying run, either on base or up to bat, um, or remaining with the number of outs they have, um, it's considered a safe situation, regardless of whether it's, you know, you come in and it's a four-run lead or whatever it may be. Um, and the only other way is, is to pitch, I think it's like three or more innings, um, regardless of the lead. So, in any case, ah, Fairbanks came in and got the save, and so I was leading three to one, and in a span of like two minutes, I went to tied for all. There was still a chance though. I had Clay Holmes, and going into, I think it was the eighth, it was one nothing uh, Astros, and then I look in and it's three one Yankees. I'm like, yes! And I even remember saying to myself, I was like, I hope it's at least a three run lead so that Holmes can screw up maybe once, possibly twice, and still get the save and then the win for me in that category. Well, the Yankees proceeded to score six runs. Oh, well, like get to where they had scored six runs. The one time you want to score, the one time the Yankees want to be productive, is the one time I don't need you to be productive. I did not need six runs. I needed a total of four runs. Actually, I could have gone with three runs. But no, you had to keep scoring. So that is where I'm at. Tied for all, currently seventh with a record of seven, eight, and six in, in the, the ties. Um, Two ties count as one win, so I'm sitting at uh, right under 500. Um, again, I have to win this week to make playoffs. It's it's just that simple. Enough talking about what we have to do. Let's talk about what we did to improve our team. Improve our team, even though we did come up with a tie. The ads and drops. Some of these ads did wind up being bust for me. Um, Gavin Williams pitched one inning and then left for some odd reason. Um, he had an injury, but he's supposed to come back, but I'm not going to play him. Um, he did graduate from my alma mater, East Carolina, so that's really cool. Um, another bust was Jason Adam. I had him on my team, used one of my six ads, added him on my team. He was there for two days and then won the IL. As I talked about before, I did pick up Luis Rengifo, which was great. I picked up Christopher Sanchez, who blew that game for me. I was not happy. He pitched, you know, four and two thirds and gave up like six runs. What the heck are you doing, man? Um, uh, Johan Oviedo. 
What did you do? Five walks in three innings against the Cardinals? Come on, man. And Arenado didn't capitalize? I think that's what made it worse. Um, I also picked up Taj Bradley, who had a pretty good game against the Platinum Level Health Insurance from Cleveland. And now getting to the drops, we already talked about Jason Adam. I also dropped Zach Little, Adrian Hauser, Christopher Sanchez, Kenta Maeda, and Gavin Williams. And the last team we were talking about, the Cheese Weasels. We are currently in fifth place with 102.5 points. The man of the hour, really the man of the last month and some change, has been Trey Turner. For me alone this week, he went 11 for 26 with nine runs scored, six home runs, 14 RBIs, just himself, and two stolen bases. Definitely, definitely helped me gain some points in the standings, but also has been helping the Philadelphia Phillies jump back into the wild card race and potentially trying to take over in their division. Since the standing ovation from the Philly fans over a month ago, he has turned it on and looked like the World Baseball Classic Trey Turner that everyone drafted in the first round, hoping that he would be the entire year. Moving to the ads and drops this week, very short and, surprise, surprise, pitcher dominated, I added Cole Reagans and Kenta Maeda. I dropped Kenta Maeda and Paul Blackburn. Well, that's a recap for all the teams, guys. I want to thank you for joining in and listening to me ramble about my teams for the last 22 weeks. We're going to hopefully keep that up for the next few more weeks, talking about the playoffs that we're going to be in and hopefully win. Um, I do want to bring some ships back to the JK channel, and I want to share them with you. Um, again, once we make it to the playoffs, anything is possible, and that's the goal. We're going to make it there. We're going to do the very best we possibly can. This is JK, and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me.